and welcome to the Living Manifesto Festival Artist Talks. Today with Lena Gould Bonderson, who will tell us more about her work, Dear Dark Web, which she already presented during the Living Manifesto Festival Part One, and is now sharing uh, again in a different version, a more elaborate version, a more um, reworked version, now in the Living Manifesto Festival Part Two. And uh, we're very happy to invite all of you to uh, ask questions and share your experiences with Lena and with everybody present. But first, I will ask Lena a few questions about the work behind Dear Dark Web. And uh, yeah, I would just like to inform everybody that this event is recorded. So if you do not wish to be part of um, the visual, you can just switch off your camera. And uh, if you do have a question, please unmute yourself, uh, raise your hand and uh, either with the signal or just uh, physically, or you can write a question in the chat. So yeah, thank you so much for joining everybody. And uh, welcome, Lena. Thank you for being here and thank you for allowing us to uh, ask you questions about your work and your process. And yeah, just giving us insight into the mind behind Dear Dark Web. Okay, so thank you, Lena, for being a part of the Living Manifesto Festival, the second part. Um, you also were already a part of uh, the Living Manifest Festival Part 1, and you also shared your work there. Um, and um, yeah, I was just wondering um, if we could just start the conversation by you telling us about um, the subject behind Dear Dark Web, which is a broken hearts and a breakup story. How did that element become such an imperative um, subject in in your work behind dear dark web super nice <laughs> to start off with hey beautiful friends and family and also other people in this super little space um uh, i know you just said nadia that you can raise a hand but i would already now ask um i would love if you have any questions or reflections or associations to the subject or to methods or whatever you're seen or not seen, I would be delighted to, to hear it. It doesn't have to be a super critical, um, sharp question. It could just be re really reflections um, because I think that would be the nicest way to go through um, like this talk. Okay, but thank you, Nadia. Um, it's actually really nice to start up with the question of the subject um, because it's interesting. You mentioned I've been part of uh, the Living Man Manifesto part one that was in January, um, but this uh, praxis as I call it has actually been going on uh, officially on the floor for two years uh, as part of the master of the um, Danish National School of uh, Theater or performing arts. Um, but there's also been this uh, involuntary start, if one can call it, because this <laughs> subject is a, a very personal heartbreak story. And, um, and it's interesting, each time I go back and visit it, um, I am surprised <laughs> to see in what way um, I've dealt with it because it's a very personal question. I mean, who haven't experienced heartbreak, but to actually uh, take an outset in something as private and also as uh, such a big cliche as a heartbreak. Um, so the whole starting point uh, was a very bad heartbreak on my own that taught me to so many uh, questions about um, like a quite big range of emotions that I had not experienced in such a severe matter before. And then first of all, going through that issue myself, but at some point there was this interesting desire to do something about it. And um, when looking back at some of the early material 
um, from like two years ago, I can see that some of it is maybe pointing at this um, very classic, almost stereotypical uh, art practice or like artist practice of um, like, where do you go from therapy into art making? And is there a line there? And that is actually um, part of why I keep dealing with this subject um, and trying not to be too uh, cringe about it because this subject is so cringe to me. <laughs> um, not heartbreak, but dealing so intensely with one's own heartbreaks. There is something um, very self-absorbed uh, in that where it can sometimes point at, well, but maybe you just needed therapy there, but what do you, what do you do if you take a material and then you make it like deliberately oversharing? Like that is what I, one of the methods, oversharing is also caring. Can you use like this deliberate too private digging into yourself? Um, yeah, so the, the whole set off was <laughs> a very personal heartbreak. And then later I tried to morph that into this praxis. Um, and now we have the videos, for example, but there is a whole catalog of also live performance uh, things and texts. Yeah. Uh, maybe I came far away from the start of the question. Yes. No, no, no. Um, <laughs> but, but maybe to just take it where you left it off, like you, you mentioned these like practices or, or, or the different methods that you, you used. So um, you also use that deliberately in, in this work, like you talk about or you mentioned that there are different methods and you allow the audience, the viewer to go through these different methods, at least some selected ones in, in this part. Um, mm -hmm. Can you maybe talk about uh, the choice of these methods or what these methods mean to you? Yeah, so so I think the reason why the, this um, this project, I call it a praxis, is because it's keep building on top of, it, uh, uh, of itself. So it started um, maybe as me uh, experiencing, oh, what I'm going through right now is something a lot of people have been going through. I mean, no shit, Sherlock, but... Um, uh, but that could be like, wow, I suddenly feel uh, the truth of some cliche uh, or like a, a lot of these um, heartbroken songs and suddenly you can uh, experience that yourself. And then I want to condense that into a method. For example, um, being uh, super heartbroken in Mexico and then reading about how Frida Kahlo <laughs> deal with um, polyamorosity and being like, oh, that's a great method she had. She revenge fucked the pain. No, she um, uh, she revenge fucked with very specific, um, um, a little bit better versions of whomever she wanted to uh, revenge. For example, that was part of one of the videos, and that became a method. So it was, um, for example, um, find your own Trotsky um, was the Frida Kahlo method. There's also been. Um, uh, yeah, I have so I have so many. Um, let's see. Um, for example, being um, crying a lot in a fetal position, then trying to reclaim that as a position of pity, and then doing it. Um, that is actually uh, what you also saw in the video. Like a lot of these um, choreographic, more choreographic um, explorations. Um, like the, also there was the lady Diana trying to um, become the marcher. I mean, it's, it becomes messy when I explain about it because, and that is why I keep naming things methods. So there is a tons of methods. That's also, uh, as you've seen in one of the movies, um, there's the saying uh, to the hammer, everything looks like a nail and I uh, swap it around, super brainy, but that was just a way to, try to formalize this method of um, going <laughs> to dig to dig very long into um, or very deeply into into your pain for example 
Um, so it's both, it's, it's, it, so it, every time there's a method, it comes from something I experienced myself or that I can see other people experiencing um, because every, kind of not everybody, but a lot of people have experienced very bad heartbreaks. Um, and then when noticing, ah, I understand this, then I try to make it into uh, a method. And I think one of the, I'm backtracking a little bit, what, but one of the maybe most crucial turning points of starting this project uh, was when I realized that I, for the first time in my life, uh, felt the desire to stalk somebody. And that felt like such, such a no-go. And I was like, wow, okay, I didn't know I could, my mind could go this bad. Um, and that was when the whole idea of, um, of, of turning to one's dark side started to become bigger also being so uh, so sad and lying in this fetal position that i needed to boot camp and choreographically boot camp the fetal position in order to get over it and when i uh, felt like um the in the enormous strength of of rage um that can come when you've been very sad for a long time, then suddenly you can feel this, this anger that can really, um, in my opinion, um, lift you up. That was when I started to think, okay, maybe this is not only, maybe I can do something about this subject that is not only about me, but that can um, just go a little bit, just open up this idea. Maybe there is something fruitful in whatever we, name uh, not so recommended feelings. I mean, it's not super recommended to be in super deep grief. It's not super recommended to, to stalk somebody. And I know it's a big subject right now, but light stalking, we're talking like super light stalking or just like, um, uh, like revenge is <laughs> not a recommended feeling, but maybe you can turn it into a mind game that can help you. And that is what I then wanted to explore to make it into a game to 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 put these methods as um, labels, um, both for what I felt myself, but also to I don't know externalize it in some way so people also can look at it. Oh my God, I'm babbling, but all the time. No, I, I want. Hmm? No, please. No, I just wanted to say that so much of what you're saying, you're not babbling, it makes a lot of sense. Like I, we also talked about your work um, in 2019 and in 2020, and um, it's just the, the experience of the heartbreak, whoever had this experience, it is such a strong experience and it takes you to places that you would never see yourself go. And I think that a lot of people will be able to recognize that and sometimes you don't even want to admit that and you allowed yourself to really admit the dark places your mind or your body was taking you and then mm -hmm. instead of let's say acting upon them in in this way that you would really not want to such as stopping let's say mm -hmm. making transforming that then into this method of dealing with it right if i understand that correctly through, through exactly. the art or through the process is sort of it's kind of like a a healing process in, in some way or at least a, a dealing process but that's the whole point with like for, for me like yes my little storyline has been like well I can look at some material and see like well that was therapy okay that is maybe more art and there is a difference but can other people use this and I I think mm -hmm. like the whole subject of I keep coming back to the the most umbrella like method of all of them is like oversharing is also caring and that is also like a pun but <laughs> who cares but there's something about uh, that I want to use my own uh, uh, to point at and to over explain and overshare situations I felt that has been very pitiful and very shameful because that that has been like the uh, um, now there's been a cornerstone in can I um, uh, can I use myself so uh, so privately and so privately and and point at how pitifully that situation is so you can um, mirror yourself in it um, 
I, I mean, there's very many editions of this um, project, but one that has been part of the life, a life setting has been trying to be uh, very drunk on a dance floor and, um, and walk around um, between people. And um, I think a lot of us recognize this person who is shouting out their heartbreak narrative into uh, people's faces on the dance floor because they're so filled with that um, feeling. And, and from the inside of the one being heartbroken and being maybe enraged, it feels like you're maybe uh, taking a, a good step and looking after yourself and not being hidden in a corner and not feeling ashamed by yourself, but you're trying to, um, I don't know, reclaim some space. But to the outsider, it just looks super pitiful. And I think that that is a very interesting um, place. And I wanted to be, I wanted to use that. Um, or what do you say? To invite people in, in there. Um, so would it be, in, like, was there an intention to make the audience um, also feel pity for you um, or for in, through the, the work? Or do you feel that, um, it, yeah, I, I just wonder about this, this moment, like this pity, and it's also really strong emotion or it's something very strong to feel and nobody really wants to feel pity for somebody because, yeah, I mean, yeah, I, mean, that, that, I think that, yeah. But that, that, that is actually what, when I look at this material, sometimes my my toes are like going inside myself because that and and I <laughs> I can't tell where somebody the spectator will when they will feel that, but to me there's something about um, mm, there's a it's a very interesting place like when I use myself so uh, so deliberately privately and I I am. Um, I'm distinguishing between private and personal. Just bear with me. For me, there can be a difference. If personal, that is within the borders of not being cringely private. That is not when the toes are getting in. That is when you are still talking about something personal. Um, uh, that could be sharing of yourself. But uh, in my ways of looking at distinguishing between then the private or the, the two private will be when there's an ease, like, do you really want to share this much or that you make the, the people receiving whatever you're talking about feel uncomfortable? And there's something about that, that place that is interesting. Um, and mm -hmm. in a live situation, it's easier to create. Um, and I tried with these videos we have now, I tried to to, I tried to translate it into, for example, the, the um, me dressing up as Lady Diana. Of course, everybody knows I'm not. Going into a mail-in bowl and actually stand there and then uh, topping it with this vocal um, exercise of, of screaming. And every time I see this video, I'm like, oh, wow. Not because I'm, I'm not ashamed of everything, but, it's, but there's something about... Um, uh, giving it all vocally and also having texts that are not holding back on the imagery. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. That, that's at least one, one of the, um, what I'm trying, what I'm trying to find. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm very curious about the, the, the Lady Diana character and also like Frida Kahlo, uh, mm. how, I mean, these are two really big figures, yeah. and and I wonder how <laughs> heartbreak figures as well, <laughs> very much so. But um, how there is also an empowerment. There was also an empowerment in 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 what they did and how they reacted to their grief and their heartbreak. And um, I just wonder how for you was this relationship to to Frida or to Lady Diana or how did you, was it more of like using their coping mechanisms or did you try a more of a psychological approach? That, that is actually um, 
so Frida Kahlo is more just the the the, the story. So she will be in the in the um, in the box together with um, uh, Beyonce, Peaches, uh, P.J. Harvey, Sufi Kell, um, even Alanis Morissette, like uh, angry, very potent, um, super clever, mega uh, talented uh, major stars um, that category. Um, and some of them I used a little bit more. And with uh, Lady Diana, that is something I actually also been doing earlier. I I tend to call it that I borrow some of Lady Diana, that I borrow a little bit of them as a method. Mm -hmm. um, in other projects, um, I've called that squatting, but in this very specific, uh, I'm I'm not trying to uh, to act or method act, uh, Lady Diana. I'm just uh, using the this idea we have right now of Lady Diana being, um, um, as I say in the video, um, we have all decided that that she <laughs> that it was not her fault what happened, and or me, not all of us, but that is the story we are writing about it. And of course, that is wrong because the reality is more complex but there's also some truth to it um so i think it's interesting to to just yeah to borrow the existence of those narratives that we write about love more than the person um and in some other versions of the live performance of the dark web it has also there's also been parts pointing even more at um these um uh, like a lot of these sociologists or philosoph ph uh, philosophers who are talking about like how love is in the late capitalism, um, like what it means to us right now, are we even capable of loving, like with a loss of mystique, loss of the acknowledgement of the other, with the rationality of choice choices, with um, the scientification of our world, and then, of course, there is also right now a huge, um, maybe you could call it movement, but at least an awareness of um, of non-binary and non-monogamy, like maybe you call it polyamorosity or a lot of other words. And I think that's interesting to to point that love. And in the material for this edition, it has not been as much pointing outwards because I wanted to go inwards first, um, which is why this selection uh, of pieces uh, is me trying to choreograph um, the movement into the stalking feeling or the rage more than also pointing outwards to how do we right now in society relate to love or how do, how do I as a millennial relate to the institution love or to the feeling love because when talking about heartbreak of course you also talk about love because that's why it hurts because you lose the whatever the idea you have the dream about it um thank you lena for all these uh, wonderful insights i'm just um <laughs> gonna say that i'm gonna stop asking questions at this point i have so many but um I would like to invite everybody else to also join into this discussion, dialogue, question um, moment. So please, um, please do so. Um, so the whole movement of the end of uh, no, Kami and um, this institutionalized love does it also mean uh, the end of the dark web in a way? Because we also lose the whole space of uh, heartbreaks and this whole losing of someone. Uh, yeah. So do yeah. You, okay, Sam, I just need to understand it correct. So so. Um, Mm. In terms of, of um, okay, so what I th find interesting with the, with the dark web is um, maybe that is pointing, okay, so there's a difference between 
um, the, the freedom of whatever is possible to get at, at the dark web and whatever we um, uh, tillade, um, damn it, what is that word? Um, that we're accepting on, on, the, on the wide web. And of course there's a loss of freedom, but there's also the, the loss of uh, safety because everything <laughs> is on the dark web, but, but, um, but in, I don't know, sometimes when you look, I think it's interesting with the subject of love because it's been forever, of course, it's not like seen capitalistic, um, late capitalistic specific. And therefore it's also interesting to look at how it has been related to differently. Um, and, and then, using a metaphor um, that is so that is so now it's like how how old is the in internet I, I should know that's 20 what 20 years or something maybe it's more maybe it's 30 but um, but we're trying to structuralize it in a way and I don't know maybe one can see that we're also trying to uh, institutionalize or structuralize or destructuralize and in a concept or an institution, whether it's then the internet and the free mobility of the internet or the free mobility of um, a love relation. But I don't know, I'm not sure exactly what you pointed at. So maybe you want to restate the question again. Yeah, uh, let me think about it. I will come back to it. <laughs> great, 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 great. But at least I would like to point out something that I hope um, I would love to get uh, whatever write me later or just your thoughts on um, how it was to go through um, the, the experience of going through. I know we talked about that, Nadia, like how this project has changed from the first um, part in January into now. And the biggest difference is that I've been able to at least try to, to, to curate how you move through it and not just watch the video popping up on a link, um, which means that it's deliberate that they open new tabs everywhere, that you're always having a blinking um, flash banner, um, that something would be direct downloading because I'm trying to, at least it has been my miniature, um, uh, way of trying to uh, um, copy <laughs> how early internet functions or how we right now have decided that a secure internet should function. We have put up a lot of, of restrictions toward it. Like we have uh, glitter blockers and we have um, these pop-up ad blockers and stuff like that, um, which is re-altering how we move on the internet. And it makes it uh, more secure, but also maybe less free. And there is perhaps a metaphor there, but <laughs> go, go for it yourself. Um, yeah. You, you said a lot about too personal. Um, I question this, mm -hmm. um, if it can ever be too personal. Um, because I mean, this is also the freedom we have as artists to to be like super, super personal. But with this personal, I mean, we just make a frame for others to mirror their own personal stories. So we, we kind of detach ourselves, even though it's super, super personal. But what we then bring on stage or make as a film or as, a, as the artwork, it gets kind of a frame, I feel. And so mm. I was wondering, because you said you borrow from like idols, um, uh, you know, maybe you also borrow from yourself. Yes, but actually that, that I don't know, where, where is that line? <laughs> I mean, also yeah, yeah, exactly. since, um, uh, since uh, me and Annika and Nadia also have been working on the floor <laughs> together with, uh, um, with Falk Richter, who talks a lot about uh, autofiction, which is like starting with the autobiographical point of view, but then going uh, fictionalizing it. And, and it's interesting to, to go like, can you, like, when is it a fiction? When is it me retelling a story about something I experienced or 
uh, translate it again to movement? When does it leave the objectivity of, of me and become something more? And when does it become something less? But there is easier when you're in a room physically with somebody. Um, I think it is possible to, to create an atmosphere of uh, making people a little bit uncomfortable with how much you're dealing with. And that is, uh, of course, easier if you know the artist on stage. Um, and it's, it's easier to be, it's like there's no end to whatever you're telling if you don't know the audience. Um, but it's interesting to figure out, is there a way to be, mm, I don't know, on, on the edge of that feeling of like, ah, are you really comfortable with sharing that? Or am I comfortable with hearing that right now? Um, and that is of course, super subjective for people, but, um, but yeah, I mean, I'm also questioning it myself. <laughs> like, is that possible? I mean, but I think that's also the beauty about it because it goes so deep. So others mm -hmm. also can open up to feel so deep. And it's not like McDonald's food, you know, you're just eating something and then you're hungry again. It's really like something delicious <laughs> or not delicious, but you feel it, you know, you really mm -hmm. feel it um, mm -hmm. and you have time to taste it. So, but yeah, I appreciate it a lot, your work and your sharing. <laughs> Yes. thank you and it's but so I'm, funny can it go all the way back again if you go so deep that it doesn't it leaves fast food it comes it becomes um uh, slow cooking but can you slow cook something so much that it almost becomes yeah like a cliche again i'm wondering I'm wondering if it can actually go the full but, circle. But even because that could my feeling be, of being uh, yeah. deliberately oversharing on a dance floor. Mm. I am slow cooking my life away on a dance floor, <laughs> but somebody meeting me will be like, wow, I don't know, too, too much. Mm. And maybe too much will be fast food. I don't know. But some like that maybe also. And though, then you have reached those. So yeah Voila. <laughs> Voila. <laughs> thank you so much for everyone's beautiful questions and comments and uh, lena for sharing uh, so much and being so personal and being so open about the process and the idea behind dear dark web and um, yeah just the intimacy and vulnerability behind your work and um, also how much it means to, to be able to observe or watch it or experience it and knowing how much that can resonate um, with a viewer. Thank you so much. Um, if you do have further questions for Lena, you can always write us and we, can, we will pass on your information or you can get in touch with her directly. Um, it's been really nice. Thank you so much. Is there anything else that you would like to share before we close this um, artist talk, Lena? I mean, I'm just still thinking about stuff, but thank you for, uh, for, for joining. Wonderful people. Um, yeah. Yeah, I just like to end on this, uh, uh, what you said, Annika, with, the, like, with this fast food, because I think there's something, this is my end note. There's something about, um go going deep and uh like oh i really want to have mcdonald's i can't uh, stop talking about this there's something about the 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 um, craving of a feeling that is interesting when feelings are an actual craving that you can i don't know also see on the internet or how we uh how we choreograph ourselves how we curate it on the internet that is also like this give me more give me more Okay, that's it. Thank you. <laughs> okay, wonderful. Thank you all so, so much for being here today, for spending this time with us, for listening, for asking, for caring, for sharing. And um, yeah, it's been beautiful. 
And just to let you know that this was the last live event of the Living Manifesto Festival Part 2. Uh, four days of uh, events uh, throughout. Uh, we had live talks, uh, guest speaker dialogues, uh, project releases. And just to let everybody know, if you missed something, don't worry. For another two weeks, everything will be up on our website. You will have access 24 seven to everything that um, was released or happened live throughout the entire festival period. So you have access to everything until the 26th of September until midnight. And then after that, we will take everything down, um, just so you know. Um, but yeah, thank you everybody for joining. Please check out everybody else's work as well. Continue supporting everyone who participated, especially the artists. Um, it's so great to create all this work. It's so great to be able to share all this work with you. And uh, please just keep looking out for the Living Manifesto Festival. Uh, there will be hopefully a new edition next year, but until then, Enjoy the current program, two more weeks. And yeah, thank you everyone. It's been great. Have a lovely evening. Bye.